Uh, hello, my name is Marty. I'm WB2FOU. Been at Ham since about 1971. Started out as WN2FOU. And then after my two year uh, ordeal as being a novice, became WB2FOU. Well, back in the novice days, you really couldn't afford some of these uh, transmitters that uh, they had back then, such as this nice uh, Drake 2NT transmitter. It's a little out of my price range and what have you. And if you notice, I'm wearing a Heath Kit shirt, and that's because I ended up uh, buying Heath Kits. They were more affordable. But then again, building Heath Kits and stuff, you learn some actual hands on soldering, how to put the stuff together, theory, and what have you. And you got the satisfaction of using the stuff after you built it. Well, nowadays, since uh, I couldn't afford this Drake 2NT back then, I recently, recently picked one up at a ham fest and got it basically for a few bucks. Well, bringing it home, checking it out, pretty clean, pretty nice. So, one of the things you have to do in it is replace the electrolytic capacitors, of course, and a can capacitor. They all have to be replaced because I'll show you here in a little bit how they've leaked out or they're just plain bad and you don't want to use any old capacitors or anything in there because you put stress on a power supply and putting stress on the power supply means you put stress on a transformer and then the transformer is going to go and then basically you got a junk unit or you have to start over from scratch. Anyhow, replacing this capacitor, I'm going to show you how to do it, quite forward, quite easy, especially when you can get these capacitors today relatively available from a gentleman called Hayseed Hamfest. Hayseed Hamfest Radio. Now he uh, builds these capacitors twist lock can type. He also too has a uh, new uh, electrolytic axial lead type and so on. And let me show you the nice job that he does building these capacitors. This is an actual uh, can cap that he has uh, had built. And if you notice the leads in the bottom are perfect. The markings are exactly as the same as the old capacitor. He even ships it in this nice box and also too puts a protective cover over the, uh, over the uh, uh, leads so that nothing gets broken up. So uh, he actually does a wonderful, wonderful job. And I'm very happy with his product. I've been using it for many years now and I have no complaints. So now without further ado, I'm going to get into taking out this uh, twist lock capacitor and everything else that's associated with it. But before I did that, I made myself a little diagram. It's a good idea for you to do a diagram. You sit down and look at the capacitor and how it's situated with the half circle, square, and triangle. And then what you do is you make yourself notes. What's attached to each? And by doing this, you can pull out the old one and then without going to the manual and referencing to the manual and what have you, you look at your diagram and Bingo, you go right to it and with no pro problem. Okay, so now let's start tearing out this old one over here. Some of the tools you can need, of course, is soldering iron, needle nose pliers, dikes, solder wick, and also, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, Hayseed Radio Hamfest does supply you with solder wick, believe it or not. He supplies you with everything, so he doesn't leave you out there stranded. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do is is I'm gonna have to remove this resistor over here which I already unsoldered and what have you so I'm basically just gonna pull this resistor out I'm gonna set it to the side and save it for later because we have to put that back in the circuit but we're gonna test it before we put it in now there was a red wire or a white wire with a red tracer I had previously unsoldered that also that's gonna come out a white wire with a blue tracer that's gonna come out now I have a capacitor over here that is bad which is connected to the can. I'm just gonna cut the lead. I'm not gonna bother on soldering it. I'm gonna show you why this thing went bad and so on. So here I go, okay. That's cut. I'm gonna pull this cap up and out and I'm just gonna put it to the side for right now. Now I have one more wire that I have to one solder and that's that red lead. And uh, that's coming off the transformer and that's one of the important ones. And of course, there's a lot of solder on it. And I think I'm gonna have to cut this lead as well, even though I have extra onto it. Because of the fact 
like that. There's too much solder. And it's just going to have to come off. So now I cut that there. Let me just see if I can pull this here off. Okay, the red wire is off. Now I'm going to have to trim these up and clean them up and stuff, but that's going to be in the next step. All right, now that that's done, I have one more capacitor again, and I'm just going to cut the, the lead onto it. I'm not going to bother on soldering because it's totally worthless and useless. I'm also too going to set that up, let it sit in the air. Now, I'm going to get ready to pull this can out. One of the other things I forgot to mention was going to need a flathead screwdriver because now uh, what they did was is they flattened out the ground leads on this electrolytic can here and they put them up against the chassis. So in order for this thing to come out, I have to flip these leads up. And in order to do that, we have to uh, take and get them up into the vertical position. So by doing that now, I have to get a screwdriver underneath them very carefully, like I'm doing. Once it's bent up, take a pair of pliers, bend it up like so, and that's that. Now, the other problem I have is getting this can out because they use a ton of solder here in this one spot to make sure that they got a good ground. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to sit there and I'm going to go back and forth with this thing until it breaks. Okay, she broke off. There's the old uh, capacitor right there. And I'm just going to get rid of it and that's it. It's going to junk pile. I do not believe in reforming these things or trying to uh, make them uh, good again and so on. Don't believe in that at all. I'd just rather buy new and that's it you buy new you get new and and that's the way it is with me now i'm going to see if i can clear up some of this solder by using some solder wick and my nice heavy duty heath kit iron so let's see what we can do here if we can clean some of this solder up i'm going to try to now i'm going to see if i can wick it up And she's wicking up. Not like I'd like it to, but it's working. Ow. A little hot there. Okay, we got enough wicked up. 